good evening and welcome to this week's edition of the Pete Mazzetti Show. My guest this evening is Max Sabrin from the Old Saybrook Fire Department. Max, welcome. How are you, my friend? Thank you very much for having me, Pete. Thanks for coming down. Thanks for coming down. So for you're actually a, a new face to the Pete Mazzetti Show. So what we're going to do first is tell us a little bit about Max Sabrin and how long he's been involved with the Old Saybrook Fire Department. Well, this is my 14th year as a volunteer with the department. Okay. And, um, Great bunch of guys and gals, and I'm, I'm honored and humble, humble to be involved with the uh, the department. And um, giving back to the community is uh, is awesome. You know, relocating from New York after 9/11 was uh, was important to pay back to the uh, to the volunteerism, and that's why I joined. Nice, very nice. You like it? Love it. Yeah, love it. So, what, so what exactly is your role for the fire department? Well, I'm a volunteer. Uh, I used to be a firefighter, but due to a personal injury, I downsized to a uh, downgraded to a fire police officer. Okay. Which is uh, just as dangerous, uh, making sure no cars or trucks hit the equipment or, or personnel. Gotcha. Protect the scenes. And uh, I do uh, media events for the special events, uh, mm -hmm. blood drive, food drive, help the uh, juniors with um, their activities. Yeah. So I, I do the, the, the fun uh, media You do the fun events, side. Yeah, the fun stuff. Matter of fact, I believe the, I don't know if it started already or started soon. I believe the juniors do pancake breakfast? They did. They started okay. in January. They had uh, their second one uh, Sunday. And there's and actually there's, there's two more, uh, okay. February 11th and the 25th, which we'll talk about All right. in, in a little bit. There's a, there's a lot on the agenda. There is, a lot, there is a lot on the agenda today. A lot of stuff. So let's talk about the Old Separate Fire Department and all the volunteers. Well... Every year, there's, there's an attrition due to either people relocate uh, due to their work, okay. and you have to be a resident of the town to be a member. Right. Just, as, just as Old Saybrook is always looking for new men and women, mm -hmm. I'm doing this uh, as a public service for other uh, mutual aid, you know, Clinton, Westbrook, Essex, always looks for new members to, to join the ranks as a volunteer firefighter, or f um, th there's a desperate need. Um, Again, because people's lives changed uh, due to relocation, um, could be a God forbid an illness. Right. Um, but we're always looking for you know persons over 18 to be a regular member and high school 15 to 17 years old to be a junior member. High school kids, and right. which is uh, they work their way up. As a matter of fact, our our, our current uh, new chief that was elected. Yep came on the department uh, as a junior many really? years ago, and now he's the chief of the department, so he worked his way up the ranks. Wow. Yeah. Now, for, now, as far as the juniors go and the, the difference between a junior member and a full member, as far as responsibilities go, is it about, is it about the same? There's two exceptions. Okay. Um, they cannot go, uh, they can't be with us after 10 p.m. at night. Gotcha. Um, they can't go on to I-95 or, or Route 9 on the highway, right. or can they uh, go to other for mutual aid calls? They can only do um, in town in town stuff. So it, it's kind of um, limited, but um, they have full full reign actually. And uh, if there is an all hands. Uh, uh, if there's a major, major, major event, yep. they will get let out of high school to assist because they're they're an intricate part of the department right. for training and for on the fire ground as well. Wow, yeah, pretty impressive. Yeah, pretty impressive. Now let's see. Now, what types of incidents does the fire department respond to? Uh, it, it could be everything. Uh, everything could be uh, just an automatic <laughs> fire alarm, CO right. alarm, oh, yeah. carbon dioxide. Um, Car accident, um, brush fire, mm -hmm. uh, house fire, business fire, uh, gas leak, um, whatever whatever emergency is where where people are running from, we're, we're running to. Right. So it's uh, we never know what we're, there's a, there's no such thing as a routine fire call. Every every call is different. Exactly. And, uh, um, the, the 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 most important thing is, is the safety of our of our members. Right. And I. I I, I saw the other day that, I believe it was one day last week, that motor vehicle was evacuated for, was there a gas leak? Um, oh yeah, there was a yeah. propane leak at the DMV, which um, that, that could be a little hazardous, but uh, you know, we, we evacuated the building and until the gas company came mm -hmm. uh, to uh, resolve the situation and make sure it was 100% safe for the workers and the uh, 
uh, customers to go back in. So uh, those are the calls that you, you, you never know, but it's, it's, it's important, again, oh, safety. Yeah. Oh, to it's totally important to show up and stuff like that. Now, in the department, is the department looking for any volunteers? Of course. Yeah, al always. Always. Um, and you know, if you have a, a couple of hours a week, it's 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 a um, it's not a glamorous position, but it's it's a very rewarding position right. to be a volunteer. Um, going down lights and siren in a fire truck is is is, is very th there's a great thrill, but knowing that you know our first job is to help save lives and save property, and um, the, the training is, is invaluable that we, we get. And you know, I, I brought my, my, my cheat sheet because I did the training you know, 14 years ago, the uh, Firefighter One. Yeah. And when I first got the book, 600 pages, is, uh, there's no way I could learn this, but yeah. after months and months and months reading and studying like anything else, um, you learn it. And oh, yeah. we do, um, as a membership, monthly uh, training and then quarterly training. And it's, uh, I think, um, Tonight, as a matter of fact, there'll be ice training, uh, which is cold water in our special suits. Yep. And um, uh, what's the expression? The way you practice is, is the way you play. And it's mm -hmm. really important to be an, an automatic pilot to, to practice, 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 to be, um, you know, again, uh, the, the safety of our members is paramount. Now, as far as the training goes for, like, diff the different types of training, obviously, they're all handle differently. Can we maybe talk a little bit about that? Sure. There's, there's, uh, there's classroom training and there's actual hands-on training. Okay. Um, I, I had, um, when I did my firefighter one, it was classroom. And then you have the, the practice of, of ropes and ladders and uh, addressing, uh, addressing a fire hydrant um, from getting equipment onto a truck. So it, it's really, it, it all comes into automatic pilot when you read it and then you actually do it. So you, 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 the training is, is, is extremely valuable. You, you, you learn a heck of a lot and, and it's, uh, you can use it, you know, besides being on the firefighter, you could use it you know, for personal use at, at home or in business. Right. You know? And now when I'm on a highway and I see a, a, a truck, I said, oh, we can't use water on this guy. We have to use foam, you know? So exactly. it's, uh, you, you really get to learn, you learn uh, building architecture and construction and different type of, um, um, uh, extinguishers that you have, uh, in, we have, you know, water, chemical, dry chem, so um, it, it's, it's an incredible amount of information, but it, it's, it's kind of priceless to, uh, exactly. to pick up. Now, as far as the different types of extinguisher, extinguishers, obviously every, every type of extinguisher sort of does a different job. Sure. Yeah, we have uh, for regular paper or, or wood, you would use water. But if it's you know chemicals, you'd have to use a, a dry chemical ex extinguisher. Mm -hmm. uh, electrical, you can't use water on electrical no. or, or grease fire. Um, it, it's funny because uh, it, it's stuff that I learned even before I was a member of, of uh, the fire department. I was at a friend's house that um, was making dinner, and um, she didn't have her. Um, stove cleaned properly and all of a sudden the stove caught on fire with the uh, with the hood and I don't know what made me realize it but I know not to put water in and I just said where's your flour and I just dumped flour on, on the stove and knocked the fire down before you know before the fire department got there so it was a, it was a good feeling you know saving the day and the food turned out to be okay too because the food was already the food was already cooked <laughs> I was say, flour on a fire really well because hmm. it was on the on the stove yeah. top you know, wow yeah you know. Didn't, didn't know that. Yeah. A couple of weeks ago, my, my mom was doing something in the kitchen, and I was, I, was, I was upstairs, and all of a sudden I heard, beep, 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 beep. <laughs> Smoke detector? My dad was like, dinner's ready. I'm like, what did she burn? <laughs> He's like, whatever it was. I'm like, He's like, She's like, it's a little, little crispy. I'm like, that's, I'm like, that works. So I come down. I'm like, hey, she's like, what? I'm like, the smoke detectors work. My dad was like, yeah, after you and I just spent a couple hours changing all the batteries in the smoke detectors. I'm glad you, know, you hmm. brought that up because- Battery change? There's many people yes. that would take the battery out for cooking, which is the biggest mistake you could do because you, you may forget to put it in. Right. And the most incredible insurance policy you could have yes. 
is a, a working smoke detector, mm -hmm. working CO detector, and, and if when you, which breaks my heart whenever you read about a fatal fire with uh, adults or children, yes. they did not have a working detector in the home, yep. and it just there's no excuse. There's no. absolutely no excuse not to have a, and, uh, a smoke detector. It's good for 10 years. Yep. Um, you have to change it out after 10 years. And a, and a CO detector, carbon monoxide detector, is good for five to six years. Okay. And um, I personally like them separate. So if the smoke detector goes bad, you don't lose your CO detector because a lot of people like to have the smoke and CO detector as one unit. But I like to have two separate units personally. Uh, it's a personal favorite where um, if one goes bad, you don't lose both units. You lose only you one. Use one. You know, so it's good to have a, a, a separate smoke detector and a CO detector. And um, it, it sounds crazy, but every month, you know, touch the button, make sure it works. And, sure. and every year, when you change your clock, change your battery. It's it's simple, simple stuff. And if right. you have a, an invalid neighbor or an elderly neighbor, help them out because oh, yeah. it's uh, there, there's really no excuse not to have a working detector in your home. I was going to say on the batteries last. Smoke detector batteries obviously have last the year. They're good for a year, and uh, we suggest that they do have the uh, ten-year battery too. So yeah. if you if you, as long as you keep it, you know, written down on, with a sharpie when you when you put it in right. on your ten-year battery, um, but also to keep the smoke detector clean. You got Max Sabrin. Would you mind sticking around? We'll do. We'll be right back. I'm Howard Schwartz, Executive Communications Director at your Better Business Bureau, serving Connecticut with the consumer moment. We now use the internet to make more purchases than ever before, but if you're looking for a business that offers trustworthy goods and services, try to stay local. Word of mouth recommendations are very helpful, but a service provider is only as good as his or her last job. Management can change, so can the employees. Always ask for references, recent references, and visit bbb.org to see what other consumers' experiences have been like. You can look up a business review or select a BBB accredited business that is devoted to our standards for trust. The bottom line is that the marketplace is in your hands. Take your time, do your research, and use your power as a consumer to get what you want. This Consumer Moment is brought to you by your Better Business Bureau serving Connecticut. And welcome back to this week's edition of the Pete Bazzetti Show. Sitting here with Max Sabering from the Old Civic Fire Department. Max, welcome back. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. It. No problem. All right, so let's talk about the, let's open up this segment talking about recruiting recruiting, and all, what, what's involved and if you want to be yeah. recruited, what you have to do. We're looking for a, a few good men and women um, to be a regular member, 18 or over. Right. Um, and, and you know, if you have any questions, uh, on Tuesday nights, uh, our department has uh, cleanup and, and training. So just stop by the department. We'll, we'll definitely will welcome you with open arms to show you around, you know, show you a, a training segment, yeah. uh, show you what's involved, introduce you to some members because there are friends of yours and neighbors of yours that are members. And, and I hate to say it, if, if I could do it, almost anybody could do it because exactly. it's... Um, it's the it's it's reading it's it's uh, camaraderie it's uh, it, it's it's a great team effort and um, they're willing to help. It's it just a I, I can't explain it. It it the, the feeling of helping someone is 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 priceless and and it just it's it's hard to put in and and um, but the the people that you we work with uh, on the on the department and as well as other towns are in need of uh, new members as well, so right. it's always good to help out your local department. And, and there's, there's a job for somebody. Exactly. You know? Exactly. And I'm sure if, if people just want to stop by and look at the equipment, you guys are available for tours? Yeah, Public absolutely. Tours? On, 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 uh, we're there uh, generally on a Tuesday night in okay. Old Saybrook. Other towns have other nights of training and, right. and meetings. And we'll be more than welcome to show you around. And uh, you know, of course, with technology, you could do a, a visual on a virtual on the, tour. Yeah, you know, a virtual tour on the, on the internet. We have a, a great rec recruiting video that was uh, done years ago, but it just uh, gives you an idea of what's involved of of, um, of professional outside training, and then we do in in the ha in house training. So it's uh, um, again, you know, I I can't stress enough. 
it's, it's real important, the training and, and the practice, though, it's, it's, it becomes automatic because once you get to the scene, it's like, what do I do, what do I do? It's exactly. what we trained for this. So um, the, uh, there was an old cliche that we had during training is the way you practice, the way you train is the way you play, meaning when, there's exactly. a real, when, when, it, uh, when you're in need. So it's, um, uh, there's all, all, all sorts of good stuff for uh, potential members to do. They'll, they'll, it's, it's enjoyable. Yeah. Now, as far as fundraisers and other events that you guys do throughout there, what are, t what are some fundraisers well, that you Occasionally, do? as needed, we do, um, uh, we haven't done in a while, Red Cross Emergency Blood Drive, yep. uh, which we might do again sometime this year. Mm -hmm. um, because when there's bad, bad weather, people are reluctant to go out, which oh, is yeah. to go out for that. But more importantly, in um, April, I think April, we're, look, we're targeting April 7th, Old Saybrook with about seven to eight other, ten, I'm sorry, seven to ten other fire departments will do a uh, food drive for the yeah. Shoreline Soup Kitchen, ah. which you're, you're, you're involved with, I know. Oh, yeah. And um, what, what's that saying? When the Shoreline Soup Kitchen calls and, and wants you to help, you, we, 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 exactly. uh, we, we call, we help it. <laughs> exactly. There, there's no, you know, it, it's a pet peeve of mine. There, there's no excuse for any, you know, stranger, uh, friend, neighbor, should be hungry in, in our community. Right. And um, again, it's, it's, it's a great, t rewarding feeling. Um, last year we had, um, actually for the last two years, we had Gil Simmons from I News 8 say, as our You and I have a mutual person. friend. Yeah, we had uh, Lee, Lee Elsie from 94.9 News Now oh, yeah. come down, they broadcast it live. And it, it's, it's a fun event. It's, it um, is. We introduce uh, members, children come down to show what it's like because they're comfortable and, and, and it, it teaches them um, helping out and, and, and helping those that, that may be in need. And uh, again, the feeling just awesome of, of, of collecting food for, for people you don't know. And, the, and the, the, cool, the cool thing about collecting food for people you don't know, it all stays local. Yeah. It all stays yeah. in the Shoreline Soup Kitchen, which is you know, this footprint. The, the numbers were staggering. You know, it, it, it's the Shoreline is, is somewhat of, of affluent area, but you know, when one person in the family loses a job, it's it's bad. When two people, it's it's crisis situation, oh, yeah. and, and and it's happened. It, oh, it, yeah. it happens, and it's a temporary situation. That that um, that's what the Shoreline Soup Kitchen is for to to help those in, in uh, emergency needs. And um, um, it's it's great how the fire department comes together um, to help out, and, and um, it's been it's been phenomenal um, from from the, the community the outpour. Once we put it on your show, it's, mm -hmm. it's like, oh yeah, it, 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 it's, it's everybody's going to show up. Yeah, yeah everybody's it's, it's good show stuff. Up. Now, how did the idea of the food drive for the soup kitchen get started with the fire departments? Well, years ago, um, there was uh, an event by former Governor Rell. Okay that did a Day of Compassion, which was a statewide event, which I was uh, um, involved with from the shoreline, but it involved almost every fire department in the state of Connecticut, paid and volunteer. Okay. And uh, it was incredible to help the food banks, which then, when they collected food, delivered to the local banks. So it, it just segued from that, when they no longer did that, I think it was 2010, 2011, and then the local Shoreline Soup Kitchen said, you know what, uh, we have the facility and, and we, we can do it. Right. So we, we picked up this, uh, we picked it up and once a year we, we, we rocked the shoreline with uh, getting food. And it's, it's a lot of fun, a lot of fun. There you go. And one of the things we, we haven't talked about yet, but let's talk about it now because we got a little bit of time. Well, let's, coming well, up, I, I well, love, I love the, the juniors, which is a, oh, a yeah. really intricate yeah, yeah, yeah. part of our department, the high school kids from 15 to 17. Yes. They do an amazing job of um, soup to nuts breakfast, which is incredible. Ah. You, you definitely go off your diet. It's, <laughs> it's only $6 per person. Mm -hmm. It includes eggs, uh, pancake, eggs, bacon, sausage, uh, potatoes, toast, juice, coffee or tea. Everything. It, it's really unbelievable. And uh, I think they had the first one uh, January 20. No, that was the second one, January, uh, January 14th. Okay. They had their uh, second one, which was about 200 people. Everyone leaves with a full belly. There you uh, go. The food's good. It also teaches the juniors um, uh, commun customer service, right. interfacing. Community one involvement. On, and it, you know, besides being on the fire department, 
Um, it's a great, uh, great event for them, great experience, life, life experience. Mm -hmm. The next two yes. um, will be February 11th, Sunday. Yep. Correct. At, and uh, February 25th. It's at the uh, old Saybrook Fire Department, 310 Main Street. Yeah. Uh, it's all over um, social media and on, on our Facebook page. 8 a.m. to 12 noon. Again, only $6. It's, it's just a, a worthwhile. And the money that's raised from this, which is really neat, the kids uh, go to, in the summertime, go to the fire academy for official training. So really? the more money is raised, the more kids can go. So it, it really uh, jump starts their, their career in um, fire services, which I got to tell you, um, well, just like I said before, our, yeah. our current chief used to be a junior. So yeah. uh, some of our juniors went into military services, some went to professional fire services, uh, EMTs, uh, one became a nurse. Uh, so it, it actually two, two became a nurse. Wow. So they, they really learn uh, behind the scenes stuff. And now, how involved is the fire academy? I'm sure you went through it when. Yeah, yeah. Well, the fire academy is up in uh, Windsor Locks. It's, okay. it's a great facility, um, and they have um, uh, just incredible whatever you need, um, whatever experience, uh, uh, whether it's smoke or a building or a blackout. It's just a, a great experience to 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 handle that. Wow. And how long is the academy? Couple um, well, about a week. Well, uh, for the juniors, no, it's, it's a it's a good couple of weeks, okay. uh, and they they uh, either can stay up there or they go they, they commute back and forth, and then for uh, proby members, it's um, uh, I think it's like a six month uh, program. Wow, yeah, pretty and it probably involves everything from soup to nuts. Absolutely, it's uh, it, it's 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 you, you really don't realize what's there until you see it. It's, uh, it's an incredible uh, sight of, of, uh, of all scenario, scenarios, so to speak. Exactly, and I'm sure, I'm sure it's, has it changed since you were there last? No, no, it's, uh, it's basically the same. I mean, they do add new evolutions. I mean, they have um, um, uh, a simulated um, plane crash scene, mm -hmm. which is, because it's not far from the airport, right. which is uh, pretty interesting too. Wow, it's pretty, pretty interesting to hear about. Yeah, it's, um, you know, the, 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 the thing about uh, being a member, uh, which is we, we, we really stress is, is safety. Um, right. Because if someone gets hurt, you, you're no good to helping in an emergency. So um, people think, you know, driving to a uh, situation, you could break the law. No, you can't. You have to follow the, the rules of the law. Uh, um, and people do respect lights and siren for the most part. Mm -hmm. And you have to get there in, in, a, in a safe uh, and timely fashion. So it's, uh, it, it's key to, uh, to, to uh, keep your head, you know, your head straight. And, and, you know, even though, you know, when, the, when your pager goes off, your, the adrenaline starts going because oh, yeah. you don't know what you're going to. No, definitely not. Out of all the years that you've been involved, do you have a most memorable call you've been on? Oh, geez. Um, <laughs> well, when, uh, when people are saved, it's, it, 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 it's all good. When, there's a, 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 when it's a life or death situation, yeah. uh, whether it's a, f uh, a boat emergency or mm -hmm. um, um, a car accident, yeah. um, it's it's always good when when it's a, a good uh, situation where people just you know maybe hurt or not hurt. That's a that's a great accident. We just we there are unfortunate situations when uh, there are fatalities and um, that it's hard for us and, and and the department. And I'm sure you guys jumped in when Superstorm Sandy rolled around the town of Old Saybrook. Yeah, we were, we, were, we um, monitored the uh, firehouse uh, 24 hours a day, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, we had a, uh, thanks to the emergency management system, uh, we were a, a, a good uh, spotlight for the, for the state of Connecticut, because we had ice and water and charging station and showers for our, our, uh, the people where people said, wow. The, but it was, again, years and years of planning you know, oh, yeah. to, to get it together. So uh, kudos to uh, Chief Spira oh, to, yeah. that had, had uh, headed up uh, emergency services. I was going to say, pl to plan for something like that that's probably done years in advance. And yeah. Yeah, it was because um, it was, it was, we, we haven't had anything that severe until, uh, I mean, I, I think we had Irene, was it, the year before? I think so, yeah. Yeah, which was 
so-so, but not Sandy was, was uh, we lucked out. It wasn't as bad as it, it, it could have been for like other towns. I mean, Jersey and Long Island got, oh, yeah. uh, Long Island protected us, but, mm -hmm. uh, uh, and, and uh, you know, they got whacked, but uh, there, was, there was considerable damage in, in Old Saybrook too, there was. along the shoreline. There was. And with the little bit of time we have left, what else you wanna tell everybody? Well, well, we have, um, you know, we handle besides uh, highways and, and houses, we, we do have uh, a, a fantastic boat, which is out of the water now for the winter time, ah. a fire boat, which we handle, you know, uh, Connecticut River and Long Island Sound. Yeah. And uh, that's a great addition to the department. And, um, you know, the equipment that we have is, is basically cutting edge. It's, it's whatever you see in, in any town or, or big city. So it's... Um, it's great, great equipment. You know, you need the right tools to get the job done. Wow. And we have it. You do, you do. And obviously you have to operate the boat. You have to be certified. Yeah, yeah. And obviously there. you have a marine, lo marine lieutenant? We, ha we have a, a marine lieutenant and uh, an alternate. So there's always coverage for the, uh, for the fire boat. And again, that's another part of our training. So it's... Uh, uh, at dock, we do training, and we take the boat out in, in spring, summer, and fall. We take the boat out for training as well as needed to pump water or, or handle emergencies. Practice. Well, Max Sabrin, we're about out of time, so I want to thank you for coming down. It's been great. Thank you so much, we'll Pete. I appreciate soon. it. We'll see you again. You got it. On behalf of Max Sabrin, I'm Pete Mazzetti. Thanks. Good night, and we'll see you next time.